So a warm welcome in this webinar where we will briefly um, inform you on why you should sign up to the pledge as a financial institution or others also, uh, or why to encourage others to do so. And we'll also talk about the collaboration uh, that is taking shape at the moment with the Pledge Foundation set up by the signatories. And we'll share with you about the celebration we're um, heading. So that's the 21st of May and the options that there are for exposure in this celebration moment for communication. So I'll hand over to my colleague, uh, tell a little bit about the background of the pledge and how it all started. Anita. Hi, welcome everybody to this webinar. Uh, we give you, we uh, guide you half an uh, hour through uh, some slides. Uh, my name is Anita de Horde. I have a sustainable finance background and together with Anne-Marie, we coordinate the Finance for Biodiversity Foundation and the pledge. This first slide is our mission. Uh, it's all about reverse nature loss this decade. Uh, that's that's yeah the goal that we're aiming to. It's going to be an exciting year, a little bit more about it later. Um, this graph shows you that uh, nature is declining if we don't do anything. It's getting worse, biodiversity loss, uh, but also the drivers of loss, uh, water, air, um, land, uh, species, uh, so if we don't do anything, uh, uh, it will be declining. So that's our aim and uh, that's how we all got started. And that's why we think, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the financial institutions that joined the pledge think there should be action on this topic. Uh, next slide. Uh, most uh, financial institutions uh, are, are already familiar with climate change for a few years uh, are active on it. Uh, measure climate change, also have it in your uh, policies, uh, steer on it. Some, some of you already uh, adopt uh, some ambitious targets around climate change. Uh, and biodiversity is also very important because if you steer on air, uh, yeah, it's very important that you also uh, look at other drivers for nature, land, species, water. Uh, it's very important for, for uh, the finance sector, but also for the economy as a whole, uh, because via, uh, via the ecosystem services, uh, a loss of nature, uh, will, we will feel that in the economic activities. Uh, so it's a financial risk also for the portfolios, uh, physical uh, and non-physical. Um, uh, so it's very important uh, yeah, to do something uh, about this. Next slide. Why this year? Join the pledge, pledge this year. Um, well, we're heading towards uh, the Nature Cup 15, uh, the Convention of Biodiversity Diversity. It's, uh, it's scheduled for October. It's been uh, postponed for a year now due to COVID-19. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, very important year because there was uh, an, um, a framework of goals for biodiversity, uh, which are not uh, met these goals uh, globally. Uh, and it's now time for a new post 2020 framework in which uh, target setting is extremely important. Uh, so it's a very important year to see which uh, which direction it's going and uh, yeah, what kind of ambition. Um, and hopefully uh, as effective as the uh, Paris Climate Agreement was years ago. Um, so that's a very, uh, yeah, we, uh, Anne-Marie will tell more about it later in the, in the presentation on how we uh, also are going to have action towards uh, CBD COP15 together with partners. Uh, to see uh, yeah, how we can influence uh, um, the negotiators, but also to show that the finance, financial sector has a say and also has an important role in this framework. Next slide. Well, this is the uh, Finance for Biodiversity pledge. Uh, we started uh, 6 September uh, last year with some very ambitious financial institutions uh, that dare uh, yeah, uh, to set up these uh, commitments. 
uh, as you can see, uh, uh, the, the 37, I will tell a little bit more later on which financial institutions joined. But in the beginning, it was 26 financial institutions that uh, together uh, 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 you know, went to an event from the UN General Assembly to show uh, world leaders that action must be taken to reverse nature loss this decade. And besides that, they're not only projecting on what world leaders need to do, they also said, okay, we think uh, as financial uh, institutions, we also have an important ambition and uh, important share in this story. Uh, and that's uh, about five commitments, collaboration and sharing knowledge, which is extremely important on this new topic, especially on how sharing best practices on how to measure how, uh, what, what is a good uh, biodiversity policy? Uh, how do you uh, engage with companies? All these topics. So sharing knowledge and exchange uh, knowledge on uh, how to do this um, is a very important one. The second one is engaging with companies. Um, also looking into EC policies, but also on how uh, Anna-Marie will tell a little bit about this. Also in our foundation, we will have a working group on engaging with companies to really look and steer towards companies uh, yeah, to have a nature uh, positive uh, impact and uh, no negative dependencies on, the, on, the, on biodiversity loss. Uh, the third one is assessing impact, impact a very important one. Uh, how do you measure biodiversity loss or a positive impact? Uh, extremely uh, important one. Uh, we will show you some work that we already have been doing uh, as a foundation. Uh, yeah, our goal is also to look what's out there uh, and, and follow the developments within tool developing. Uh, but also measurement approaches, aligning, uh, data aligning. Uh, so this is also a very important one, uh, which is going to develop over years. But now already we identified six uh, measurement uh, tools. Um, more about it later. The fourth one is setting targets. Yeah, that's, that means uh, that the financial institutions that joined uh, are willing uh, to join the outcome of the Convention of Biological Diversity, uh, COP15, uh, in October, and already says, yeah, hopefully ambitious enough, uh, we will look at these targets and we will do our utmost best to um, implement them uh, within our material portfolios and to look at them and see how, yeah, uh, we can work with these, uh, uh, with this framework. Uh, so setting targets, yeah, new topic, uh, will be very important after uh, the CBD. Uh, the fifth one is reporting publicly. Uh, very important one as well. Uh, we are aligned within the TNFD, uh, Task Force Nature uh, Disclosures, uh, who is working on a reporting framework on how uh, to disclose uh, activities uh, on nature and biodiversity. Well, you can sign if uh, we, we opened up this webinar uh, for also non-financial institutions. So that's why we are a little broad within this webinar more. Mo uh, normally we are more targeted on financial institutions, but now we keep it a little bit more strategic. Uh, but for the financial institutions that are out there, you can sign um, if you uh, think your organization is ready to work on this and to follow up the commitments uh, before 2024 that the latest uh, yeah please sign up and join the move movement uh, and have some action uh, on this topic 37 signatories 13 countries almost 5 trillion total of assets uh, a lot of asset managers so there's a lot of interest uh, from the asset management side also insurers banks uh, impact investors uh, Pension funds, it could be more. So the pension funds uh, among you uh, uh, within this uh, webinar, uh, yeah, please join. Eh? So you are the first. Um, well, we have a new round of, uh, we had two rounds. So we had the first round of maybe the, uh, oh, the, the previous slide, yes. We have a first round uh, in September. We had a second round in December from new financial institutions and we will have a third round 
at the end of May. We'll tell a little bit about it uh, uh, later on. And then next slide, uh, it's about the guidance document we made. Uh, it's connected to the pledge commitments. So if you're interested in what does it mean, each commitment, uh, and also examples from financial institutions that already joined, uh, how you can see each commitment uh, and also have some inspiration for examples how to do it. Uh, we will update this guidance document every year uh, to see if we can have more examples and more best practices. Uh, so that this, this would be uh, interesting uh, maybe uh, to read this document uh, to learn more about uh, what the, the ideas behind the commitments. Next slide, yes, celebration moment. Uh, we think now uh, of the 21st of May. That's a special day. It's the day before International Day of Biological Diversity. Uh, we're now looking uh, after this webinar, we have a, a meeting also with uh, all the NGOs and uh, to see if there's a celebration moment, maybe uh, on Friday or on Saturday uh, uh, to uh, see if we can have a extra uh, nice celebration of new uh, pledge signatories. Uh, and we do so by a new video, a CEO video statement. So if you would like to sign up, 5th of May is the deadline. And we also, if you are not interested in a video with your CEO, we also do a press release. So the deadline for that is 10th of May. So we know uh, how to organize this and also to gain some uh, publicity around yeah, new uh, signatories. So we can show that the movement is growing and that the appetite uh, among financial institutions is for biodiversity is also growing. You can do so by uh, complete the application form. Um, yeah, I think this is my part. I will hand over to uh, Anna-Marie to tell you more about the uh, foundation and our, our, our activities. Yes, thanks a lot, Anita. So um, early this year, based on the demand by the current signatories, the 37 foundation has been set up to further facilitate the collaboration as this is also the first commitment. And this foundation will be supporting working groups. Um, three will be starting on engaging with companies, another one on assessing impact, really looking into measurement and data and a third one on public policy advocacy, more to be shared on this later. So it's really to go beyond sharing practices, which was done by the initiators of the pledge earlier on in the finance and biodiversity community, um, but really move in towards collective action onwards to 2024. And I forgot to mention, by the way, that we're recording this webinar, but just to inform you <laughs> in between. Um, so with the current pledge signatories, some uh, first steps have been identified in a pathway for engagement with companies, impact ass assessment and public policy advocacy. And the idea is to start collaborating and working in working groups as well on target setting, reporting and positive impact um, early 2022. But first start with these three working groups. We made a guide on measurement approaches together with our partner finance and biodiversity community, uh, part of the European business and biodiversity platform. Um, we're working with a small group now on uh, an inventory of engagement, collective engagement actions that are already out there at the moment, like deforestation, palm, soy, etc. And, and look for opportunities how to better include biodiversity in there and what are the gaps. And next to that, we're also in close touch with the CBD secretariat to look into engagement um, for the CBD negotiations itself. And further on, we're uh, looking into partnerships with other initiatives to really um, yeah, engage in a good way with this whole process. Um, so yeah, that's why we have set up a foundation and you can become a member of, a, of the foundation. This can all only be done uh, once you have signed up for the pledge and you can include this in your registration form. You can also sign the pledge now and join the foundation later, but the working groups will be starting uh, second half of May. So 
may be good to already uh, start joining them. And in this collaboration, we're keen uh, on partnerships. <coughs> Our main partner uh, at the moment is this European Finance and Biodiversity Community. It's a group of now 32 financial institutions that have met since 2017 and that shared practices uh, on several topics like assessing impact, uh, disclosure, positive impact, uh, and made a few publications on this so far. It was set up by the European Commission, so uh, our resources for this piece of work, uh, both Anita and I are leading this community as well, um, are covered by the European Commission contract, so we can facilitate uh, sharing practices over there, but not the collective action. And we're specifically on the topic of measurement, we're working closely with this European Business and Biodiversity Platform, as there's also a dedicated work stream on methods with an expert that is doing assessment on the measurement approaches. And of course, there's the annual European Business and Nature Summit we're also contributing to. So um, one of the documents that was made in collaboration with this community is this overview of finance and biodiversity initiatives. We also noticed from uh, signatories or potential signatories, uh, well, not to really know who's doing what. So we decided to make an overview. And in this overview, we've also addressed um, who's doing what per topic. So to also facilitate a uh, for potential collaboration per commitment. Um, and in this overview document, we just made this one table with several levels of collaboration, but also a fact sheet per initiative on who's doing what and what are the activities and reports that have been most relevant reports that have been published so far. I'll hand over to Anita to explain a little bit more about this document that has been made. Yes, this uh, document we made, Annemarie already told, uh, uh, together with the finance and biodiversity community and together with the biodiversity and business community from the Commission, uh, European Commission, uh, we made an overview of all the uh, biodiversity uh, measurement approaches tools that are now in use by financial institutions. Uh, we identified uh, six of them uh, according to a, a sort of uh, approach to see if they're mature and also uh, yeah, uh, scientifically uh, robust. Uh, and we are keen on updating this overview every, uh, well, I think every quarter on the content and every year on if there's more uh, or other uh, measurement assessments uh, or tools that are in use by financial institutions. Um, uh, we, we update this also with the uh, uh, community uh, of practice, uh, but also with pledge signatories to uh, yeah to to uh, to see the developments within the, the financial sector on this. Uh, we we do this because we find uh, that that measurement is very important. Uh, yeah, and it's evolving uh, very quick quickly. Um, so if you have, have interest in this topic, assessing impact, please look at our website to download uh, this uh, this uh, report. A little bit on the governance. Uh, we are now working, setting up the engagement, uh, the, the working groups, uh, and we're also looking for chairs and co-chairs among the financial institutions. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, please sign up, register, and see uh, yeah, which topic you're interested in. And to see, uh, hopefully, you also are interested in uh, being a chair or a co-chair, uh, leading the work of the wor working group. Um, me and Anna-Marie uh, are the secretariat, so we are coordinating uh, the work uh, together also with, uh, with some assistance. Uh, and we're also in the middle of setting up an advisory board uh, to steer on strategic, but also financially uh, uh, the foundation income uh, and to see that uh, the money is spent well on uh, the topics that are uh, and the strategic uh, pillars that are most important for the group. Uh, join the movement. Uh, you see that uh, there's a difference between uh, the pledge signatories, not all the pledge signatories are joining also the working groups. 
this group of financial institutions already said yes uh, and already committed to uh, the working groups. Uh, there are more to follow. Uh, so uh, there are more uh, that now are internally uh, uh, discussed uh, how they can be uh, also involved within the working groups, but this group already said yes. So with this group, we are already uh, active on uh, uh, working uh, uh, together on the topics and starting uh, officially within uh, May, half of May. Uh, as you can see, there are different types of joining the movement, different types of joining the working groups. Um, and we have from impact member to supporting member. And you see on the right side, you see the, the community of practice, finance and biodiversity community hosted by the European Commission. Uh, we're now for this year uh, selected the uh, engagement with companies as a topic uh, which we are active on within the group. Uh, so the group uh, yeah, is working on uh, several meetings to exchange knowledge, but also uh, uh, to publish a guide on uh, biodiversity engagement with companies. Uh, so that's work uh, go, uh, ongoing. Uh, and uh, the three uh, from impact member means uh, the more you do, uh, uh, the less you pay, but it's the, the amounts are not uh, here but it's a, a small amount that we ask, uh, yeah, depends on what, uh, how big you are uh, to be active uh, within the, the foundation and the working groups. Uh, so the more you do, uh, the less the, the, uh, the payment is. A collaborating member means um, that you're working, yeah, actively uh, um, working in the working groups uh, and gain knowledge, uh, co-develop publications, actively support and represent also events. Uh, on this topic uh, and engage with other financial institutions to sign the pledge, of course. And supporting member, that's more um, uh, the, the, the lazy member. <laughs> you, you, you can uh, have the pledge uh, events, updates, uh, also have information on uh, our progress uh, on the working groups, um, have uh, several calls per year to join, to see what's uh, going on, to have information on this. So these are the, the types uh, within the foundation to be active uh, within the working groups. I think we come to an end and there's room for questions and hopefully also uh, answers. <laughs> so any maybe... questions so far you can use the chat or raise hand if you wish. <laughs> 